When people hear the name Yancy Crusher, they tend to give one of two responses. Either A, oh, you mean the British guy who talks pretty fast with a piss-colored wallpaper and that metaphor for her piddled all over my inner child? Or, more likely, what are you talking about and how did you get into my house? Yes, it seems the world's opinion of one Benjamin Yancy Dynamite Tyrannosaurus Crusher is quite a polarizing one indeed. Some think him to be a hilarious combination of Jesus and an even funnier Jesus, while others still think him to be a swear mouth curmudgeon urinating on people's children or something. Well, just to set that record straight, let me take a stance on this veritable game review of Civil War. Zero punctuation is good. Well, that was easier than I thought. Alright, alright. I believe you really understand the man you have to look into his past, so let's take a look at what a hasty Google search turned up. Yossi is British born from the town of Rugby, which is best known for being the birthplace of, you guessed it, the Fleshlight. From a very early age, he gained a passion for both reading and games, which would shape his career to come. Picking up the handle Yossi from the time he drank Gordon Ramsay's piss out of a dice shaker, or from the internet, I don't know. He tinkered with writing and indie game development for years, the same way a demon art user tinkers with Monet, until moving to Australia for that all too important reason, a choice piece of ass. While there and living off of scraped up cheese from McDonald's wrappers, he took out the frustrations of his miserable life by shouting at the internet about some games he got for free. He named the show Zero Punctuation, an obvious nod to the fact that he speaks very fast, despite the fact that that's not what that actually means, and the rest is history. He was picked up by the escapist and BAM, instant superstar, and to this day remains one of the internet's most infamous reviewers of games and shit. I say infamous for a reason. Remember when I said to some people think of him in a negative light? Well, it seems a lot of people don't appreciate the humor and regard him the same way a polar bear regards a baby seal covered in Thousand Island, which is to say they want to eat him. Despite that, he still continues reviewing unabated, uploading every Wednesday without fail, even while having recently relocated to San Francisco, California? What? That's where I live! Oh shit! I'll be right back. Part of Zero Punctuation is by extension Yahtzee's success is due to its unique aesthetic. Yahtzee Bonesaw uses a slideshow animation style showing crude yet cartoony representations of what he's describing in contrast to dry joining word of his analysis and comedy. And I know I made this sound so sexy you can barely contain your 9 inch cock, but honestly it really works. The art is very striking and simple enough to be easily recognisable, and Yahtzee's aforementioned critique technique is both sharp and witty while also giving a no holds bar rundown of what he thinks of a product. And that's what really sells it for me at least, you never get the impression that he's saying something that he doesn't believe. Yahtzee on the rocks he typically gravitates towards games that are either visibly fun or offer some unique game design characteristic to it, hoi ho, and if it offers neither, then he will give it no quarter. This knowledge can help you sort through a lot of games by simply measuring his opinion against your own, find common ground with him and then use that perspective while watching his reviews. The flip side to this particular delivery is he tends to review games that he expects to dislike so as to more easily throw a tantrum, have more talking points and give better content, on which I have to agree. I mean look at me, I've been sucking his dick by proxy for the past two minutes and it hasn't gotten any less excruciating to write. Stolen jokes notwithstanding, those were easy. And honestly I can see why he worries about such things. This may have been facetious, but at one point Yachty did mention that he would be sued by the escapist if he doesn't produce a video every week, which considering that track record of shit ass things they've done, I wouldn't put it past them to baby seal him as well. My point being, for anyone who dislikes him for picking games he hates, just remember it's really hard to be funny when you're talking about something you genuinely like. Now where was I? Oh yes, more bollock goggling, yum yum! Yossi's ascension into internet rock stardom has affected millions of people around the world whether they know it or not. Like a foul mouthy E. coli epidemic. He remains a benchmark for linguistics and internet writing and has swayed many reviewers to adopt his methods if not his entire style. He's like the internet's version of Shakespeare but with less dick jokes. And if you think to yourself, well I'm not an internet reviewer or writer so his work has no effect on me. First of all, don't interrupt, you dickless pig. And second, how about this, you presumptuous sow? If you've ever used the phrase PC Gaming Master Race, you can thank Yahtzee for that as well. Though due to Yahtzee's admitted contempt for that phrase that the people adopted it unironically missing the subtext, maybe you shouldn't literally thank him for it. In fact, I've heard numerous stories talking about how unapproachable he is. He's described as introverted shy and sometimes even rude to his fans. You know, the people who pay his bills. I've never met the guy, or rather he's never met me. Just be careful when talking to him at a convention. He's not as patient as, say, a serial killer or a nest of wasps with a stick jabbed into it. Anyway, for me, watching Yossi's reviews not only inspired me to make and play better games, but also inspired me to improve my linguistics as a whole. And this may blow your socks off, but this video is somewhat inspired by his style. Most curiously, Yotzi in a box he doesn't use scores as some of his opinion of a game. I personally find this a breath of fresh air because it requires you to actually LISTEN to what he's saying in his reviews. What a novel concept, tell me more! I feel this makes his reviews much more useful as you can see the- Oh sorry, what? I wasn't listening. I feel this makes his reviews much more useful as you can see where a game's particular shortcomings lie and dispose of any ambiguity as to why he likes or dislikes a piece. Unfortunately, not everyone shares my open-minded point of view, and there will always be those screechy-voiced, piss-soaked, slack-jawed nematodes who have issue with anything that deviates from the norm. Yotsi even pointed out a response he got where the person said, How could you call it a review without a score? It's more of a rant on games that are mainstream. I'm sorry, did we change the definition of the word review to douchey assholes on G4 making terrible jokes and then throwing up some arbitrary numbers so as to appease sponsorships when I wasn't looking? Sorry, mini rant over. Continue! I think an old high school buddy put it best, even though he has a very particular taste, his enthusiasm makes you genuinely interested in the games he enjoys, and when he hates a game, you begin to sympathise with his side. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. I think it was more along the lines of, that motherfucker funny, yee yee hyphy yolo. Unfortunately, it's not all sunshine and happiness, otherwise my dick would get way more mileage. And honestly, fuck G4, I'm glad they're gone, good riddance. Anyway, if I had to choose a downside for ZP, it would be this. I don't really get the feeling that his heart's in it anymore. I feel like he's in a position where he can't quit and feels guilty for complaining about such a comfy job. But enough psychoanalyzing slash reading slash sniffing things I found in his B 
been, over the years, he's become very samey and safe with the show, expressing less creativity and just sort of going through the motions, like a checkout lady staring to the middle distance, wondering where the years have gone along with her husband. Even his writing has become somewhat stale, with an over-reliance on metaphor like an episode of Family Guy on Quaaludes. To be 100% fair, he has tried mixing up the formula in the past. Firstly, by doing retrospectives and indie game reviews during the slow summer release season, which is a brilliant idea and works really well, so I move on. And secondly, by occasionally doing episodes all on Limerick Meter, or doing the whole episode in a racist accent or something. And if I may be a touch hyperbolic, those episodes are more painful than a shotgun enema. It's like watching that incredibly white kid in primary school rap about being from the streets before being immediately ruffle stomped by the ghost of Isaac Hayes, I say in my totally legitimate Northern California British accent. Thank God he's largely stopped doing that, but it brings us full circle to the fact that his show, making fun of stagnating franchises, is ironically itself starting to stagnate. Though this stagnation could be due to his other accolades and projects being new catalysts for its creative expression. Ooh, nice segue! See, I'm a fancy writer too! Yes, as previously mentioned, Night of the Yachtsbury has plenty of other projects to keep him busy. He has aforementioned ongoing in the game career, three books, Let's Plays having just concluded, R.I.P., writing additional review notes for The Escapist, writing poetry, and so on. He's admitted to having done cocaine in several of his videos, and while I can see the evidence of that, I doubt it's quite as far in the past as he's led us to believe. The man doesn't seem to need to sleep, but this near suicidal dedication to his work seemed to be really paying off. Besides his droves of fans, I had a girlfriend who read one of his books and said it was really good. I didn't read it myself, obviously, because I can't read. But as he gains more and more of a following with these other projects, I feel like zero penetration has begun to suffer. It's become a day job for him, and as the jokes don't hit as hard, I gradually lost interest and stopped watching for about a year. And yet I find myself still watching his other content, which is why I feel like he still has a lot of creative energy and will continue to do great things. But unfortunately, the golden years of ZP are over. They're still funny and great reviews, but I would watch them in order and start back when the concept was still new and exciting to him, and he hadn't blown his load over getting a real book published. If you're somehow not familiar with his work and you're at all interested in the bone-dry, pitch-black humour those limey Brits are known for, I would highly recommend you check out Hotsy Totsy Yotsy. As previously mentioned, it's not perfect and it's certainly not for everyone. He will bash games you like. I mean, it's happened to me and just about everyone I know. In terms of the rest of his body of work, I would start with his books before moving on to his games and let's plays. Good as they are, they're definitely less polished. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go chuck an entire bottle of Listerine to rinse out the taste of Yachty's anus. I mean anus. I mean anus!